Abby here, and today we have a new episode in the Art Venture series. I mean, I'm calling it right now the Art Venture series because it's like an art plus an adventure. <laughs> Whoa, genius. <laughs> it's basically, I want to start this uh, series. I, I, I already have one episode. It was on like trying to deal with a lot of tabs, um, open art tabs. Like how do you deal with constantly... Like that was the, the 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 inspiration for the video or the basis, the theme I guess for the video for the uh, the first episode. But but for this episode, I think we're going to focus or I'm going to focus on AI art, and I know it can be annoying hearing that um, because there's so much like baggage there, and there's a lot of animosity in the art community because you know the whole AI bro thing. Sometimes like the way uh like the the rhetoric is or the the way things are advertised is like it's always about trying to replace people or at least that's the the negative the really strong negative message of the whole ar ai ai art bro thing so we'll try to ignore that and uh, put that negativity aside and also we'll try to remove the the copyright issues the what else the um because there are some ethical things here because it, it scraps a lot of content without it, it has a lot to do with like cap copyright laws like it's hard to like you can't stop it from happening so a lot of artists feel like they're being robbed and there's a reason why a lot of ai, AI art the, it kind of looks the same very similar and there's not a lot of uh, deviation uh, you do have to be more creative with your prompts I guess I'm not really sure how it totally works because I myself don't really use it uh, maybe in the future who knows if it becomes easier because right now if you look at AI art like the way I mean there are plenty of YouTube videos that talk about uh, the process of doing it but it just takes a lot of work I'd rather just focus on my own art first and then once this whole thing becomes more publicly refined uh, and more safe i guess then i'll double down not double down but i'll try to incorporate it maybe in my process but right now um i'm just you know i, I have this folder of uh, a bunch of AI, ai art i've found online um, i'll try to link the links in the description below but um i think i deleted like i forgot the link of one of this uh well, I'll, I'll try to find it maybe through image search but yeah check the links below if you want to see more Assuming you're not going into a fucking spaz <laughs> just seeing this because I know it can be triggering or it can be what's the word uh, like you'll you'll experience maybe an ex existential crisis like fuck are the machines going to win I don't I don't think so I mean it can come up with some interesting really interesting types of concepts and as much as because when you look at AI art your ch chances are you're thinking of the original um illustrations or samples where the hands are fucked up where it's really the surrealistic um depictions of random shit and it looks really ugly so maybe you have that negative view but there is i've collected some or downloaded some really cool looking ai art that, that i find cool i mean there's way more but these ones really got my at attention and i found them very interesting and in a way, it's kind of weird. I find these um, AI art manifestations kind of inspiring. And you can definitely see just by me scrolling through this um, folder, you'll see a lot of similarities in terms of like there are some deviations here and there, some different uh, changes. Uh, th there is a slight variety but they have the same elements like it seems like they were done by the same artist but i do know they were the like a lot of the these um they call it models they're based off of uh people who have a good track record and i've i've heard names like ross draws um sakimi chan like these big name artists who have a very distinct style that's why for example if you look at the, the faces of these women they have they have that anime look. Um, maybe Kushinov. Is his name Kushinov? Like there's this guy who has a face like this. Who, who does anime tricks. 
with these proportions too. Um, but the point is, uh, they have like a very similar face, with small eyes. Uh, they're kind of animes, Asian, Asian looking women. Um, so that's kind of the lean, but I'm heavy on the anime uh, style, but it's pretty interesting what these can come up with. Now, I do know it's essentially a an amalgamation of a different artists, but for me, I don't think anyone can deny that a lot, at least for the ones I picked, they're visually stimulating and they're good looking <laughs> yes there are some like if you focus in on the details sometimes it feels kind of off which, which is isn't too bad actually like a lot of these are are actually very legit like even the hands like a, i'm not sure how they do it but it it's correct for the most part at least the ones i picked um now this is not the average ai art i do know that like a lot of people don't really know how to fully use it and you have to be really into it to find the the right methodology i guess but seeing stuff like this for example like this thing i mean yes it's it's a, a combination of a different things and it doesn't totally make sense but aesthetically like i like the way it looks uh first of all it, it looks uh handmade which i find very fucked up <laughs> uh because you can see like the paint strokes it's it's a mix of an oil plus or and or pastel for me anyway and i like how there's a bit of a silhouette i mean even the way the hair is done it's very common in ai in ai types of uh, artwork but they have this kind of hair where it's very anime like and but it's also chunky in a way like it's uh, rendered very interestingly and i actually like it like if a, an actual human being were to able to do this I would probably like or follow them or follow their work anyway and um yeah i mean look at this even the eyes seem painted it looks very natural i'm not sure how they do this what you would have to input but again we're looking at the the end result here and i think that's what ai art is uh, we need to focus more on how it can um Take away the negative stuff, take away the, the AI bro fucking retardation, but <laughs> uh, like aesthetically, I think we can learn a lot from these types of generated artwork um, because in the future, this is going to be even more available to pretty much everyone. Um, they're going to work out all of the, the kinks and the, uh, the, cause it's, I think it's not as common P people, people don't, uh, reach this type of level of artwork yet only a few do um but as this thing becomes more available uh if people want like a quick illustration just uh like, let's say they're doing a editorial piece um they can just generate an artwork that's relevant they can just type relevant words in and then they'll, it'll you know this thing will generate a an art piece that's pretty good looking and that can help you know hook people in to their article it, even the article itself doesn't have to be written by a human being because even writers are experiencing this thing where um you can just like a uh, like chat gpd i think that's what it's called like you can just generate th these sorts of things so i don't really know how ai is going to affect our future like as a whole because i know even uh like narrate and nar uh, voiceovers or voice people who do like narration narrations and stuff i've seen some pretty interesting ai that can replicate a person's distinct voice and it's so scary but that's just the way things are and i think we should be more um instead of trying to go back in the past because there's no going back this can of worms or ai worms <laughs> is pretty much open so we can just um we have to go with the flow and try to adapt i mean we can you know we ha we can argue about ethics and copyright stuff that's cool or that's good but um, in the end of the day like how are you as an artist going to adapt i mean look at this even the way the hair was done look, look at the, the line work it seems so natural like it was done with a pencil even the armor 
even the shading you can see some slight shading like it looks pretty realistic um again i get it it's a a, a compilation an amalgamation a combination of different artists styles and techniques um, but it still looks cool you can't deny it so for me whenever i i, I find this attractive enough to put them in my um art style folder because I, I, aesthetically it looks kind of nice even the hair i know it's very typical in ai for your hair to look like this i mean there are more traditional looking ones there are more 3d looking ones but they do tend to have this abstract squiggly um uh type of effect or silhouette like if you take away the face and everything else it looks like an abstract art and it's a it's a type of abstract art that actually looks visually pleasing right look at the shading here lots of gradient work i mean look at how natural this thing looks now the face is more softly done so lots of soft gradients and soft brushes it's a bit tight it's, it's cleaner but look at how at the edge of the eyebrows there's actual line work there even the ears you can see some inks pencil strokes again it looks very um aesthetically pleasing i mean fuck and it's okay for things not to make sense if there's one thing i also took away from this whole AI, ai art thing is not everything you make or create has to make sense because it, in the end if it looks good it still looks good because some people argue that oh ai, AI, AI art is not accurate but is human is art done by human like manually done by whether it be traditional or digitally done like do we always create accurate work i don't think so we can learn a lot from a i mean look at this yes it's generated but that's for the person to um like if the person just wants an image quickly done then they can just input whatever they need to input in their prompts use whatever models they have to um, like you can't stop th these people it's already there but i think we can reshift our focus perhaps and find ways to i mean stylistically speaking is this really bad again take away the ethics the morals the copyright stuff uh, the stealing of is quote-unquote stealing it's kind of like stealing but also not because there's this huge gray area that isn't really and it's not just art it, you know, it's a bunch of different uh like music writing um and yeah <laughs> but stylistically it looks kind of nice i mean even the background or it feels like there's an underpainting here you can see like the orange like it has that uh effect um like uh, an under orange painting and then you paint on top of it so you can see through the the openings and you can see that orange stuff it makes it look more natural um, and again, look at the hair. It's very abstract. It's very weird. But instead of seeing or saying, oh, it's not accurate. Oh, it sucks dick or <laughs> whatever. Why not try to copy it or take inspiration from it? All this means for me or what I choose to take away from this is my hair doesn't have to be as accurate. It can be like AI art, you know, I think it's a great way to shift or view or change our perspectives i think viewing ai art can the good ones anyway um can help you it's, it's like a second eye in a way it can see you what's it, it can quickly show you what's possible or um yeah let's find more stuff here um now for stuff like this this is much uh, i do like the these ones more because it's more natural looking now this one seems more like a comic type of thing like these ones where you can see more of the brush strokes the pencil strokes the shading where it's imperfect these types of line works i want this in my work too the colors are amazing um the organic lines see this fuck i mean look at how the armor and the clothing was done is it totally accurate no but it looks good look at the pencil shading uh the highly rendered face this is typical of most um artist type of work 
where you highly render the face and then everything else is a bit more sketchy. Uh, and it makes sense because we're human beings, we tend to focus more on the face or the heads of things. And it helps, and it helps you save time, like you focus on the 20% of the painting that gets you the most results or that contributes to the most results. So even if these parts right here were not colored or not as finished, but the face is like highly well done, like that's more than enough for that piece to look somewhat complete. Like this is one of my favorites too. It looks, I mean, come on guys. It looks kind of cool. Not kind of, it is cool. So instead of going, oh no, AI art is gonna take my job. I mean, it, it is taking um, a good amount of jobs. If you're, if people just want an end illustration and they don't really care about like the specifics and they're kind of, they're sa somewhat satisfied with the end result of AI art, then this is going to, and this is going to affect obviously the, the market for uh, illustrative artists. And uh, maybe you're going to just be hired to fix up a few things. Uh, but I know concept art is different because it's more of a design thing. So you have to be a designer first. But I think in general, I think um, as much as you can experience a an existential crisis, it doesn't take away the artist. There's a saying that the artist comes before the art or there are or there is no such thing as an as art there are only artists it's from a it's a quote from a famous artist so maybe he's a narcissist or maybe he's extremely biased but i kind of get it i mean these sorts of things won't happen if there weren't human beings to make this in the first place i mean this looks like a digital brush like a round brush typical round brush used in i don't know photoshop or clip studio paint I mean, the face, I've seen this face before um, by the Kushi something guy. And uh, even like Sakimi chan, like they have the same, somewhat same face, like Ross draws too. But th these types of artwork, it looks nice, but it's not really my thing. Um, I downloaded it because sometimes I'll see the, these stuff here and I like seeing the more um, brushy because it feels more handmade for me. For example, uh, for this part, this is a, a chick in them. She has like a mech or she's standing in her mech, maybe some kind of mecha thing. Look at these parts right here. Does it make sense? Like, uh, like let's say you're not doing AR, you're doing this manually. Do you really have to figure everything out? Or for example, if you photo bash, you're not even thinking about all of these mechanical stuff. You just want things to look mechanical, right? So you can apply this to your own work and this this type th these types of work can remind you that not everything has to make fucking sorry not everything has to make sense not everything has to be perfect and isn't that interesting because people think that AI, AI art is perfect but it isn't it still looks cool and I think this can remind artists that or this should remind artists that if it looks cool in the end then being perfect being right doesn't really matter you know so if you're thinking of the end results like oh shit ar is like you can't deny the supremacy like you can't beat a machine in doing machine like stuff this you can't generate a lot of these concepts quickly through these um methods but it doesn't take away from you being able to create. Like you don't have to allow this type of work to rob you. Like if someone is better than you, do you stop creating for, um, yeah, I mean, you, you, hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. Ugh. I mean, look at these pants. Does it make sense? It's not always consistent, but it kind of makes sense. For example, the, the backdrop. All of these parts, does it have to make sense? But it looks very sci-fi-ish. If it does have enough information that suggests it's somewhat sci-fi, then that's more than enough. I like how the pen is uh, there. Um, so don't let, let these things, try to reshift your mindset. Um, so far, I've been learning a few things here. Um, perfectionism doesn't have to be a thing. Being perfect doesn't have to be a thing. You can be sketchy, you can make things not make sense. For as long as it looks kind of cool in the end, 
you'll be okay. Maybe in concept art, because I know there's more of a iterative design process involved. Um, I guess. But if you're just if you just want to create cool stuff, then just create cool stuff. You don't have to uh, let these things um, bother you as much. Take inspiration from AI art if you are an artist, because um, some people want will want to use more of these programs because they they just don't want to spend the time to draw or paint because you know they have different priorities, and you know it, it is what it is, you know. But if you are an artist and you and this and the, and these types of artworks stop you, maybe you're not meant to be. It's kind of a dick thing to say, but um, yes, I understand that this can affect like the market, and it does. But if this totally destroys you, um, I don't know. Like, I, I it doesn't make sense. Again, take away the uh, the copyright stuff. Like visually speaking, like are you not inspired to look at art like this? If a person did this, would you not be impressed? Take inspiration from these types of artwork. Look at how the line work is done. It's not perfect, but it still looks cool, right? For example, the hair hair is pretty hard to draw, but you know, it, it, you can just suggest it, I guess. For example, fabric or clothing, the folds don't always make sense, but if you can just suggest it and make it like render that suggestion well, somewhat well, then I think you're okay. And then focus on say the face. Just get good at drawing pretty faces and you're, you're pretty much there. Um, you can just keep repeating and changing the, I guess, proportions of that face as you go along. Like these hands are getting kind of like interesting. For example, look at look at her her shoulder pads. Does it totally make like do you see like the design element here? Like you don't have to as an artist. You, kind of like AI, AI art. You can just make it random and not random, but you can just you can suggest it and not make it so right. It doesn't have to always make sense. Now, if you're a designer and you want things to be accurate, you know, you can model it or draw it more, um, uh, in, not intuitively, but more intentionally, perhaps, sure, but, for example, this hair, the, the, the way it flows, it just, it looks so nice. Now, these hands look nice too, and they're not fucked up looking, it actually looks legit. Now this blue part, it I think it was supposed to be a ring from some art piece, but it kind of just went weird in a weird direction. But take away this this part, I mean, fuck. And this was supposed to be like a, it's supposed to be like a uh, an accessory, like a metal circle thing, like a patch. But 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 anyway. So again, cute face. If you're good at drawing cute faces, pretty faces, you're pretty much okay. It's very common in the art community and, you know, it's it's, it's a staple. Like, you can't go wrong drawing pretty chicks. Look at this um, shoulder, arm, fuck. Sleeve, rather. It looks naturally done. Does it totally make sense? No, but for example, this part right here, like, what the fuck is this? But in the end, it still looks nice. And I think that's that's my takeaway anyway. Like, just make it look somewhat accurate, or suggest the accuracy, and rendered not render, but uh, may, maybe render, but try to make that suggestion sexy. Ooh, maybe that's a takeaway for this episode. Um, now this hand is not even like it's like a weird. That's like a that's basically a penis right there. But yeah. And I see a lot of noise done here. It makes it look more textury. So, you know, just add some noise. Um, get good at drawing pretty faces, lips, eyes, small nose, um, or whatever your style is or, pre or preferences are. For example, this shoulder pad, like uh, this elbow area, like what is this? Doesn't make sense, but it's somewhat accurate. You can always uh, fix this kind of thing. If you look at the line work, it's actually red. Um, and you'll see this a lot in, you know, like typical art stuff. 
where you color the, the line work or the pencil uh, lines to kind of blend in with the, the colors. Like you don't want to totally erase the line work. You, you want it to blend with the colors. For example, the, the line work for the hair is pink. You can see it here, the pencil strokes. For this part, it's blue. Um, for the face, it's pretty highly rendered. For the body, it's close to black or like really dark navy blue. Um, so this is very common in like uh, di digital art, anime, comic book art. Um, if it's done digitally anyway. Dig digitally, fuck. Ugh. But isn't it cool? I think it's cool. Now, I, I did pick these because now this one's very, very complicated. But is it though? I've seen this type of rendering from many artists and it's more gritty it's more it's highly done or it's like fully finished but like this rendering style of being gritty and kind of sharp i've seen this before but is it not interesting to look at like look at the folds does it make totally does it the fuck does it make sense all the time i don't think so you can just suggest things but you cannot deny that she's hot. <laughs> the, these, I go. I'm sure there is an artist, uh, like a basis for these sorts of things. But uh, this one's more of a fantasy artist or fantasy um, chick. But uh, look at that. It's so nice to, to look at. I look at, even though it's like gray and red and white um i think it's the the ornamentation the complexity the intricate type of designs plus a good range of values for example yeah this whole thing is gray but look at the amount of different grays within that depicting all of these ornaments the clothing the belly even the belly button why is it showing it's very tight um it's not even clothing. It's she. She's she's uh, some kind of creature, I think. But look at the arms, like the armor parts. It looks so gritty and uh, manually done. So this this is actually very achievable, I think. Don't believe me? One day you'll see. <laughs> oh shit! Ambitious. Now this one's more of a mech girl. Now if you if you look at the hair, it's very similar to the past artworks we've seen. Like the, the way it just flows, it's very, it has an abstract kind of look, very swirly lines and silhouettes and shapes. But the, the difference is it's rendered somewhat differently. It's more 3D, it's more opaque. Uh, you can hardly see the line work. Uh, and they're more like tiny brush strokes, providing that gritty, uh, more opaque look. Even this kind of cape, I mean, damn. This was supposed to be a logo or something, but whatever. Does it make sense? Like, you can tell that this hand is pulling up the this kind of fabric, but th these folds don't have to make sense. It just has to be suggested. Um, now, I'm not sure where the cape is going here, if it's part of her hand. or if the, Like, we can nitpick all of the, the, the mistakes, but I think we have to take away that or we have to just see the bigger picture it looks cool and it doesn't always have to make sense for example anthony jones is a an influential artist um and i'm sure you you've, if you're into concept art he's very well known his, his designs don't always make sense it's very surreal and whenever he does have to design you, you'll see him paint slower because he has to, he has to think more but if you just want to create art create cool stuff from your imagination you don't have to be accurate for example kim jong his anatomy isn't always accurate as much as people say oh shit like kim jong is this master i mean he is but he's not super accurate he's very he suggests a lot of things whether it be anatomy um subject matter perspective uh, perspective shots it's a combination of different suggestions but his execution like the way he does it makes it attractive um, painting or drawing with a brush pen with the ballpoint pen uh, doing it in a very big canvas um, 
doing it without reference, some basically on the spot stuff. Like that's what makes his art amazing. It's it's a combination of all those different things. It's it's not just the end result. It, it the end result matters too, but um, it's everything in between. And I think, oh, this is amazing. Um, maybe three D was used here, or the models have some three D um, components, and it kind of mishmashed into something that looks kind of cool. I mean, yeah, does it have to make sense, or does it make sense? No, it's kind of weird, but it looks cool. Now this one's again with the hair. It looks so abstract, but it makes sense. Like you kind of get it. Anime features. Um, I like the line work. It's not perfect. Look at how it's not perfect. Very pencil-like sketches. It's not just one line. Sometimes it's one line. Sometimes it's like a repeated line. It's very natural looking. The line goes with the the skin tones, the fabrics. Um, if you've been to Pixiv, the art station, you've seen these kinds of artwork done manually or digitally by you know an actual human being without using AI prompts and such. So it's very possible, possible. but being able to generate like a lot of inspirational pieces, um, I think this is what AI is very powerful at. I mean, it is a machine of sorts. It's a program. So it's a bunch of code and it gets the job done. Um, as crude as it may be sometimes, it can, if you do it right, you can get some really cool looking stuff. For example, this hair, it's very weird. It doesn't have to make sense, but it still looks amazing. Uh, the nose, this in this case, uh, the style is a bit different. It's more of a, you can see more ink blots here. Uh, the line work for the eyes, the nose. Uh, it feels like it, it was done with a, a pen, a ballpoint pen or a high-tech G pen or something. But yeah. So try to see the visual elements that you find attractive. For example, this has a bit of a lens correction, I think. Or like an RGB shift thing going on here. Um, I do notice a lot of noise being used to add a bit of a... To make things more cohesive. Pencil like strokes, which is common in anime, right? Uh, it's ju it's just more represented here and more common here. Um, nice renders. Look at the folds. Very suggested. Typical. You, I've seen this types of uh, visual information before. So suggest the visual information you want. It doesn't have to be accurate. It just has to be there. Inform the viewer of what it's supposed to be and do it in a suggestive kind of way and make that suggestion sexy right um and i think nowadays let me just have a, a sip of coffee here that's good it's actually kind of cold now <laughs> so that sucks but um I mean, look at the folds of this bag and such. So the point is, if you're looking at these sorts of art, um, like you, you can tell this is uh, based on a product design sheet. So it looks very inaccurate right now because it's a mishmash of different things. Um, right? Even the logo seems weird. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's a combination of something. But if you look at it from afar, it looks kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think if you want to... Um, or another thing I think to take away from this is... Nowadays, I think as an artist, you have to expand your... Like what you offer or what you're, what you're about. You can't just be about the end result. I think the artist comes before the art, so... If there's something you should market, it's going to have to be you, the artist. Your ideas, uh, your techniques, your methodology, all of it, your story. Like that's what makes you an artist. And obviously the end result too, because you can't just be 
like all like art- artistically minded but your drawing suck like you have to actually be skilled i remember back in college in my humanities course my professor mentioned three things that make art art or it's it's not like an either or like if it's not if it doesn't meet these three things it's not art it's not that it just means that if you meet these three things it's more likely to be considered art or good or great art and hopefully my, my memory serves me well for example oh, anyway side note this arm right here looks like a comic book style type of thing where it's where the the darker parts are just done in black with a really brushy bristled out brush um so that's interesting but yeah these are the three things that that this one just uh that make art um art and i think number one it has to be done by a human being so i think this is why a lot of artists and ai bros or ai or ai artists have like beef because if it isn't done by a human hand or if the human does not participate in the art as much or is less likely to be involved the less likely that thing is going to be considered art so i think that's why there's a lot of beef in between these two groups um but see so number one one of, one of those three things is the human aspect it, the if the more if the person if, if the human being is more involved and is in charge mostly of the process um and is in command then you're more you're more likely to be considered um a legitimate artist so i think that's why a lot of ai bros get a lot of or ai artists get get a lot of like um what's the word insults because it's just not going to be considered think of it this way i use photoshop um for my art clip study paint but I, i'm going to focus on photoshop if i digitally paint something i am more likely to be considered an, an artist than say a person who uses photoshop but just adds a bunch of filters for example if you just uh place in a photo add a filter like does that make you an artist I don't think so but if you take a bunch of photos make a collage out of it you can call yourself a collage artist people if if people can see that you're tr- manipulating photos like and try to make it pretty like if they if they can see the you participating mostly in it then i think you're more likely to be considered an artist say than a person than if you just added a bunch of filters you know so it's kind of the same thing with AR. I, I think it can be used as some kind of filter in the back uh, in the, the 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 back end, not back end, but in the the end of the process. Or it can also be used in the beginning where you generate a lot of concepts and such. But if that if you're just using that and or that feature, that step, and calling yourself an artist, you're not going to get as much support. I think. Um, so I, I think the second thing is skill. Um, and this goes hand in hand with the human aspect. If you're not skilled, if people don't see the the craftsman or the uh, what's the word, the artistry in it, the movement, I think you're less likely to be considered an artist. Like these three things are connected, by the way. That's why it kind of makes sense. They're like the whole the holy trinity of art in a way. So that's why. When uh, first of all, if you look at AI art, it's not it, sure it's done by a human. Like a human had to write those prompts, but because that 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 person did not participate as much in that process, and maybe they did a few touch ups in Photoshop after or before hand, or maybe they they, they did a uh, a quick sketch to kind of um, because you can add other programs or other steps. Like I, I think InPaint is the program where you draw something or whatever, but because you're not in command and not mostly in control of the process and it's basically just an ad- an advanced search engine slash filter um that's not really going to be considered as a leg- legitimate skill so again that's why i kind of get why arr does not considered or these ai artists are not as accepted in the artistic community because 
they were not involved in the process as much, like mostly. Um, like they, they they did not do the bulk of the work, or they did not command shit. I mean, maybe writing prompt is, isn't enough. Like you're just, anyone can do it, so it kind of takes away the value of it. But the second thing is it lacks skill. Like there is no artistry in it. Like there is no craftsmanship. There is no practice involved. I mean, trying to find the right prompt, it's just not the same. I mean, even a writer is more of an artist than say a person who just write, writes prompts. Can it can it be an art of its own perhaps? But it's it's just not there yet, I think. The third thing is that your art has to look good. So maybe this is where AI art can be considered art. Because if you show someone a piece, even if you just don't say it's AI art, they're going to say that's nice or that's that's a cool looking painting that's a cool looking drawing or that's a really nice piece of art so the third thing that makes art art is that it has to look pretty it has to look beautiful in some way there has to be like a an attractiveness to it to it there has to be an aesthetic quality to it and i think this is where ai art can dominate or it compensates for the lack of human involvement because number one you're, you're using a lot of like artwork that's already been done by other artists so you're not really involved in it um so you have that you know that stain i guess and second you don't really have the skills a lot of these a lot of these ar ai sorry artists they're not as skilled so they're, you're, they, you won't get as much respect and people just won't see that artistry so be, the moment you say it's ai art you will see people's faces change it's just it's just not the same you know but because it's uh not not all of it but if you know how to use it and i've shown you some really cool looking examples um because some for example this one look it, it looks kind of wait the hand is kind of off and the hand is missing here fuck because uh some of it anyway looks amazing and looks really cool looking and there is a really high aesthetic quality quality to it um, this is where AI art can be considered um, art The in this aspect, the aesthetics. So I think this is the uh, the saving grace <laughs> for these AI artists. Just make sure your, your artwork actually, or the end result looks nice and you'll be fine. Kind of weird here, but whatever. So, but that's just, uh, these are things to consider. It's not an end all be all, by the way. Um, it just means that the more people can see it was done by a human, number one, the more pe people can see that there is a high skill involved. That if uh, if yeah, sure it's a human being, but if it's not as if they if they can see the artistry, like the the skills, um, and if anyone can just do it, then you're not going to be considered as uh, skilled because it's going to be very common, you know. So there has to be like a movement some kind of movement involved like a manipulation uh, like you're trying to command it trying to control it they can see that you're trying to mold something out of nothing you know writing prompts uh, it's just not there yet i think i mean a writer if you see a person write if you see a writer a novelist an author right they're sculpting words on paper or they're using words to sculpt their story you know so maybe if you add a bunch of prompts, I guess there, there is an aspect of that. Because now, if you look at a lot of like the vast majority of AI art, it, it doesn't look like this. Like you have to find the right things, you have to input the right stuff. But the fact that once someone finds that series of prompts, it, and eventually you're going to reach the same results in the same amount of time more or less, that kind of takes away the skill part because you can just copy paste basically. So that's kind of the, the downfall of AI art, right? Quote unquote art. So if you're not, if, if it's less likely or if the human being is not as involved, if there isn't a high degree of skill and if it looks ugly as fuck, then good luck wanting or receiving compliments on that thing being an art piece. So that's just something to consider. Again, it's not an end all be all. It's just something that you should expect the more so, the more the human the more you realize that it was done by a human being the more you realize that that human being is extremely skilled and not everyone can do what he or she does 
and the moment you can see that the actual end result is actually pretty good looking pretty uh, beautiful pretty aesthetically pleasing the more likely that thing is going to be considered art and i think that's just something to consider um nowadays you have to sell more than just your um end result and i think we have to prioritize the two first parts as artists let me have some coffee fuck <coughs> sorry that coffee by the way is super cold um, and there's a lot of like creamer in it so it's very sugary um or sugar infested anyway so knowing that we have these three aspects to consider and expect um let me just uh this one's kind of nice i want the skull back where's the skull chick um this one's kind of nice this this one looks pretty fucking natural by the way oh look at the pencil strokes fuck me okay we'll try to find the wow she thick <laughs> let's go back let's go back let's focus there you go focus okay so given that ar art is heavy on the the aesthetics part good AI prompted, uh, well-modeled, well-referenced um, AI, AI art. Since it does have that aesthetic look, um, as artists, we have to prioritize and really showcase our first two things. Number one, we have to show we're, we're human beings. So people need to see you. People need to know, hear your voice. People need to understand that you have emotions, that you have a personality, that you have um a style that you know that you have a inclinations that you make mistakes that you're um that you struggle too and that's what makes you a human being so if you can advertise that and show that in your work um i think that's going to be your first step and the major step in separating yourself from these um uh from from i think this can help you in promoting you as an artist because people, when people think artist, they think the end result. And I think AI art, I think, is a good way to change things up or to switch things up and remind us that we're just, we're not always about, we're not just the end thing. We're not just the end result. We're the entire process from beginning to end. Like we're this, the story is also what makes us artists, right? So try to find a way to express yourself online, grab a microphone, buy a microphone, uh, speak your mind, share your thoughts, like, like how I'm doing people, the moment people can just see or hear an artist talk, that's already going to show you that you are a, a, a human being. So that's your first step. The second step or the second thing that you can double down on is your skills. So show time-lapse videos of your work, show process shots. I think this is where we can dominate because a lot of AI artists, they don't like showing their process because they feel like a fraud. Um, some some are more open, which I do like. They, they, they just like seeing the end result, which I, I find very... Um, is amusing the word or just interesting because they're not as attached. Like They, they just want to experiment and see some cool-looking art piece. And they're, they're kind of waiting... In the way, like they're, um, they want to be surprised by what the, the AI comes up with, and I kind of get that. Like being able to just generate like really cool looking art and see what comes out, it's just fun to do, you know. So th there is that side that I think is more healthy and more playful. But yeah, as as artists, I think we need to double down and improve ourselves and show off our skills. So a lot of art for for artists, if you are an artist, you have to show your process you have to show your performance because art is not just about the end result it's about you your thoughts your feelings your emotions you as you being a human being but also it's about you performing the art 
the way a dancer dances, the way an athlete's, the way an athlete, I don't know, plays the sport well. <laughs> you can tell I'm not an artist, but I, I'm not an athlete. Um, it's the way a singer sings. Like there has to be a live thing, like a real time or time lapse version of whatever your process is. You have to show that you're performing. So art can't just be about the end result always. You have to, you have to be drawing, painting, sketching, uh, sculpting, 3D modeling, um, animating. People need to see the craftsman in you, the skill, the the movement. Because it, to be alive means to move. If people just always see the end result, um, it can still be considered art, but it's not going to be art, 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 you know? <laughs> because uh, they can't see the, uh, like you can have more of an impact if they can see that you're doing the thing. So as artists, I need, we need, I think we need to double down on the first two. Show the human, show the human aspect, number one. And second, show your skills. You, oh, definitely you have to study, improve your skills. So that's a, uh, because if you, if you don't have skills, your art is going to look shitty as fuck. So the, the whole, your art being aesthetically pleasing, it's an expected thing. Like we know this by now, but AI art is going to dominate us if we don't fucking double down on the first two. Yes, we want to make your work look good. And that's always a good thing. But I think what we lack collectively as as a community is we lack the human aspect. We're not sharing our thoughts. We're pretty fucking secluded. I mean, yes, it kind of comes with the uh, the personality, the job, um, the the lifestyle. But it doesn't mean you can't share your opinions. And it doesn't mean you can't share your thoughts, your emotions, your opinions. Um, say something. Speak your mind. Uh, write things down. Uh, um, do videos. Do podcasts. Uh, do do short videos. Do long form videos. Um, do films, whatever your medium of expression is to show your human side. You have to do that. Um, or even just, let's say you're doing it in, Im in, image form, in image form. Show your references. Show your sketches. Show the process behind your end result. If, if people can see you like live or this kind of process, they can understand that, oh shit, there is a person behind this thing. Right? So that's something I think we lack as a collective. We're not showing our process enough. Uh, or, or, or we're not showing the, the human side. We're not writing down our thoughts. Like, what made you want to do this illustration? What made you want to design this environment? What made you want to build this world? You need, you need to show that off, I think. So that's a, a major lacking in our collective um, conscious mind. And the second thing I think we need to work on is the process. Uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 definitely, it's a part of the human thing, but we need to show off our skills. So definitely lots of practice. We need to improve our, uh, our skills. And like the way we move, the way we draw, paint, sculpt, animate. We need to uh, write, even um, make music, whatever your art is. We need to learn how to perform right find a way to show your performance like there is a skill to making art but there's also a skill to performing and making that art and uh, it's not always like um the same thing it can overlap but uh, for example tr trying to draw or, or illustrate things live or in real time and sharing that process it's a very different thing like knowing that there's a camera or you're being recorded, you need to be able to learn to get used to recording yourself, creating what you create. Um, and being, being able to, uh, like the art of performing is an art in itself. Being able to make that thing interesting, like the way you sketch, the way you do your schematic designs, the way you find references even. Like there's a lot of skills, hard skills, soft skills involved in this. And, um, yeah, you need to show that side of, uh, your skill sets. And this has a lot to do with improving because if people can see, if people cannot see the, 
the the high skill level there you're just not i mean yeah people will see your work as art and they know it's done by a human being but it, it, it won't be considered it won't be considered good art so obviously you want to improve um and still keep the the fundamentals in check and that's making good art and to make good art you have to have solid skills i know nowadays we have the whole um the idea of modern art where it's it's essentially like a money laundering scheme at this point um especially for the high tier types of stuff like forget that let's focus on the common people and that's most of us skill has always been something that can separate you from the rest of the the crowd athletes can only do what they do and uh, no one else it's going to be hard for you to do their specific uh sport so it's very specific to them and your style the way you um do your art it's going to be very specific to you so i think having a good style too um kind of meets the human aspect because your style is a it represents like your experiences too but also your style is a reflection of your skill set you know so i think to combine both something that kind of overlaps with the human aspect and the, the skill aspect is your style Nowadays, it's even more important to have a style, a style where th that's very distinct to you, um, but also a style that show uh, uh, a, a type of style where people can actually see you make that thing. If people can see, if people cannot see the, the behind the scenes, the process behind that style, it's just not going to have much of an impact. So try to develop your style, work on your um, you can even look at AI art. It doesn't. We can get inspiration from from anywhere. The point is, you need to have something that's you and you alone, uh, and you need to show that off, basically. And in the end, try to make it look good. <laughs> show the process. Uh, show why you wanted to do it, or what made you come up with it, or what made you inspired to do it. Um, and try to do your best to make that. Uh, sketch drawing painting illustration rendering uh film animation scu uh, sculpture 3d model 3d model whatever your, your thing is try to make it look good too um, and if you have all these three things the more you're likely to be considered an artist and the more likely your um work is going to be considered art and not just any art but good art that people can enjoy and share and be inspired by the same way AI art, AI art can inspire people classical solid human being made <laughs> art is still there to stay so don't be so sad about AI art try to see it as an inspiration as a way to shake things up a bit because I think we've been getting a bit soft and focusing too much on the end result and we've we've been forgetting the the human side of things and uh it's the whole the end justifies the means kind of thing where we're just so focused on the end hopefully i'm using that terminology or that phrasing right but i think we've been focusing more on the end result like as a culture as a society as a society as a civilization of human beings i think we're, we've been very focused on the end results always trying to be more efficient more monetized and we're so like spread out thin at this point that we've forgotten the uh the human side of things basically so be a human number one be skilled show that craftsman in you that's number two um and that includes performance process performance and number three make art that's pleasing to the eyes at, at the very least to you you know so hopefully this episode helps um and uh, yeah go forth and keep drawing keep painting <laughs>